Good evening, good evening, good evening. Is my camera blind? Hold on. Is that better? Or no, it's still blurry? Move my papers. So tonight, I have been getting a lot of questions about financing and getting assets in our holding company and getting loans in our holding company and buying property in the holding company so i figured let's do a live so we can kind of you know break down come on here break down you know what a what a holding company is why we need a holding company how to properly set one up and how we are going to use the holding company to benefit us so a holding company is supposed to be for asset protection. Now there are other uh, things that we can use. You may have heard of a trust. You can put assets in trust to protect them from creditors. But a holding company to me is my vehicle of choice. Um, it is simpler to form. It's more cost effective. And you can kind of move the assets around if needed, okay? Um, I always tell people if you're interested in getting a trust to go ahead and, um, you know, consult with an estate planning attorney in your state because you know, um, succession laws are different state to state. But if you're interested in a trust, you should be speaking to an estate planning attorney in your state. But a holding company is a great mechanism to either protect or hold business assets or personal assets for this reason. Let's say you own your home and you own your vehicle and we have some cash in the bank, okay? So you have a house, a car, and money in the bank. You're driving, you're driving down the freeway, it's raining, you hide your plane, and you run into the person in front of you and paralyze them. They sue you for $2 million and win. You only have a million dollar policy uh, for coverage. So you personally are on the hook for the additional million dollars. Well, they can come, you know, seize your home, take your car and the money in the bank to satisfy that judgment. Okay, that's how that would work on the personal side. Same scenario if you own a business. So if you own a business, and you get sued, and you had a company car, you owned your property, you had money in the bank, they can come take your assets, okay? So what we're going to do, we want to separate our assets either from us personally, so if we get sued, we don't lose our assets, or we want to separate our assets from our business. So we'll have our operating LLC. This is the LLC that everyone knows of. This is the LLC that's doing business. This is the LLC that is signing contracts. This is the LLC that is, you know, entering into um, maybe doing, doing some loans, financing, building business credit. This is the operating LLC or the main LLC. The holding company is simply an LLC, okay? It's, what makes it a holding company is how we're going to use the LLC. So we are going to use the LLC to hold the assets, meaning if we own the property, we're going to put the deed in the holding company's name. If we own the car, it's going to be titled and registered when the DMV in the holding company's name. Therefore, if the business were to get sued, this entity doesn't have any assets, so we don't lose the assets. In business, you you in business you will get sued. Now, whether you lose, whether you win, that all depends. But sometimes you may be at fault, or your employee made a mistake. Like things happen in business, and you are gonna take a loss. But you you want to minimize how big of a loss that we take. You know, losing money. You know, having to you know close down an entity and start one over. That's one thing. But having to rebuy property and rebuy vehicles, you know, losing a trademark, losing your copyright, we don't want us to have a big loss. That's why we have holding companies, okay? It's very important that you understand with a holding company, we're not doing business, okay? We're not building business credit. 
We are not entering into contracts. We are not financing anything. All of these things, doing business, uh, entering into contracts, financing, building business credit, all of these things are opening up yourself to be sued. You can default on a loan, lawsuit. You can breach a contract, lawsuit. You're doing business, someone's upset, lawsuit, okay? So a holding company does nothing. It's like no one knows about the holding company but you. That's what makes it a holding company, okay? So, you know, I love a good graphic. But let me see if my, I think my graphics may may come up backwards because you know i gotta turn my little thing around hold on now if we don't have assets right now another um people call it a holding company it's not gonna be called a holding company there's something called a parent company where you can have one entity house all of your businesses but I'm a visual person, so give me a second so I can, you know, get my little pictures together. Why don't I ever have my stuff together, Joy? Why don't you have your stuff together? You know what? It's in my other phone. The devil. Hold on. I can get it off. My, I can get off here. Um, well, while I'm getting this off, so once you transfer your assets into your holding company, what we're going to do now is we are going to lease the property to our operating LLC. So if we have um, a vehicle, just like if you're going to go, go lease the car at Lexus, you would sign a contract. You would say, hey, I'm going to lease this, this Lexus GS whatever um, for 36 months. And you're going to pay, I don't know what a Lexus is, five, six hundred dollars a month for this Lexus, right? Same thing with you. So your holding company that owns the vehicle will have a lease agreement with your operating, uh, your operating company. You're going to actually sign a lease agreement. And you're going to say, okay, every month I'm going to pay you $300 to use this car. We're actually going to make the transaction. You're actually going to either wire or write a check to your holding company for $300. So yes, the holding company is doing business with your entity, but you're not going to turn around and sue yourself. So we're good. So every month we're going to be, you know, sending the money over for the lease agreement. Now, the whole point of setting up holding companies and structure and you know all of this is to protect you so it's not just setting it up you have to set it up and you have to follow whatever other formality so if you own a car and we are now going to lease the vehicle to the operating company there there needs to be a signed lease agreement and then there needs to be um monthly payments every single month not just, oh, I I formed it and, and that's it. Well, no, we, you got to follow the formality. So before you sign up, you know, for a holding company and, oh, it sounds good. And I, this girl on Instagram was talking about boom, 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 boom. You're going to have to follow the formality. So every month you're going to have to write a check or, you know, make a little wire transfer from one account to your operating, into your holding account for the lease agreement. That makes it stick. So when there is a lawsuit, the first thing opposing counsel is going to do, oh, you don't own these assets? Let me see your lease agreement. Mm, no problem. There you go. Well, let me uh, pull the bank records and let me see if you, if you, if you were making lease payments. Mm, no problem. Here you go. So you got to have all your stuff together. Like you always got to think two steps ahead of what's happening because they're going to be so upset once they figured out, oh, they don't own the assets. Now we got to dig deeper to get them. Okay, I got my little graphics. I got my little graphics. Let me go ahead and download them. Let's see, four and six. Okay. So bootleg. Now, another thing we can do, what I'm about to show you in this little picture, which I think is so cute, is some people. My lives are raggedy. I know my internet's bad. Um, some people will have a a parent company, which they sometimes I'll call a holding company because it it holds the subsidiaries, but 
that's not a holding company. A parent company, if you want to have like one entity own multiple LLCs, that will be a parent company setup. Okay, where's my download? See, I'm about to be I'm about to be booting I'm about to be screenshot this uh, thing because it's taking too long. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me first get my holding company. Boom. The devil. I have an error message that is showing up on my, this is number Satan. This is number Satan, that's okay, that's okay, Satan. Y'all gonna have to look, I have an error message that's popped up on my screen as I'm trying to take my picture. So the picture gonna be bootleg, but we gonna get the just of it, okay? We gonna get the just of it, the devil. That's okay. Boom. Okay. Oh, and the one that has everything separate. Bam. Okay. So. Just to make her a little bigger. This will be our holding company structure. We got our holding company that's going to own our assets. You have your other LLCs. And then if you want to use the asset, we're going to have a lease agreement and we will lease the assets from the holding company. If you don't want that structure, another structure could be like this where the entities are not all together. You have your holding company and then your other business entities. So one, some people like that, like, like a flow through structure that'll look like that, or I call it the bubbles. You just have four or however many different entities you have, you just have different entities. Now, if you wanna have a parent company set up, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have your parent company and then your different LLCs. So I always preach every business needs to be its own LLC. Not a whole bunch of DBAs, it needs to be its own LLC doing business, okay? If you combine your LLCs together, this is what you're doing. So I have Joy's Barbecue, I have Joy's Lashes, and I have Joy's Car Rental. Okay, but I don't want to have all these LLCs. I just have one LLC and then I just get a whole bunch of DBAs. You have really just one big pot of gumbo. Okay, all your assets are being combined together. So if Joy's Barbecue, did I say Joy's Barbecue? If Joy's Barbecue and Joy's Lashes and Joy's Car Rental if they're all together and one entity gets sued, the creditor for that entity can take all of the assets from all of the companies because it's really one big LLC. So if I have a car on Turo and they crash and kill someone, it's my car for some reason, you know, the insurance didn't subrogate and I get hit with, with the judgment. They're now, they now can touch Joy's barbecue money, Joy's barbecue assets, Joy's barbecue property, Joy's barbecue vehicles, and they can touch Joy's lashes money, Joy's lashes assets, all because I wanted to put everything under one LLC, okay? So we don't do a whole bunch of DBAs. A DBA should only be used when you want to do business in a different name than what your uh, entity is, not running multiple businesses. So back to my picture. So if I have Joy's Lashes, Joy's Barbecue, and Joy's Car Rental, I can have this structure where 
I have my three different LLCs. So I have Joy's, Joy's Barbecue, Joy's Lashes, Joy's Car Rentals, and of course my holding company that will own my assets. So if I own a trademark, I would want that in my holding company. If I own any kind of copyright, I would own that in my holding company. Any kind of cars, uh, property, equipment, I would have all that separate in my holding company. Now, if you wanna get fancy with it, okay? Some people want to have a parent subsidiary structure where we're going to have this entity basically own the other entity. So I would have something like Joy's Enterprises and Joy's Enterprises would own Joy's Lashes, Joy's Barbecue and Joy's Car Rental. You want to get fancy with it, you could, whatever are the profits of the, of the baby LLCs, we can push up via a management fee to the parent company. The parent company can be taxed as an S Corp. So I'm only running my payroll through the parent company and paying myself that way. You can also set up this parent subsidiary structure. Okay. Well, why do I want to do that? Well, depending on how much money you're making, Sometimes, okay, depending on how much money you're making and depending on what you're wanting to do, okay? There are like a thousand and one strategies, tips, and all this great stuff, but what are you wanting to do? If you're not worried about financing anything in the baby companies and you only want to have like one main company that you're running all the financing through, building your business credit, blah, 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 this structure would work because you're going to zero out the profits every month in the subsidiaries, pa passing that out through as a management fee to up to your parent company. Or you can just have what I call the bubbles, okay? So you just have your LLCs. You, you get a payroll from LLC number one. You get some payroll out of LLC number two. And you get some payroll out of LLC number three. At the end of the day, they're all going to file a tax return. Um, it's all going to be filed in your personal tax return. And it's all, the, all the money, whether you are an LLC or you're an LLC or corporation tax as an S-Corp, all of the profits flow, flow to you personally. Okay, so either you're going to file your LLC um, on your Schedule C on your personal tax return if you are an S Corp, you're going to get something called a K-1. A K-1 is going to be kind of like a 1099 form. So your, your S Corp is going to file a tax return a month before your personal is due. Whatever are the profits, you're going to get a K-1. You got to put that K-1, those profits, on your personal tax return. So tax-wise, whether you are parent subsidiary or the bubbles, they, everything flows to you personally, tax-wise, meaning all the profits go to you. The only entity that pays its own taxes is going to be a C-Corp. So a C-Corp is what they call double taxation because the, the actual entity itself, <laughs> broken now, I know the devil, the actual entity itself pays a tax and then the shareholders will pay a tax and they receive the money. But whether you are doing what I call the bubbles, just your separate entities, or if you are doing the parent subsidiary structure, all of the profits, whether you take it out the business or not, they're going to be flowing to your personal tax return. So you got to pay taxes on that regardless. Now, if you want to do all of that, meaning have a holding company and the parent company, boom, 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 I believe in always having layers around you. Like as an attorney, we're just trained, like I'm looking at how many things can go wrong and then how can I protect that before I even, you know, start go. So we, we, we never want to have the holding company to do business. Me personally, I feel like if I had this structure with the holding company owning the other LLCs, I mean, and I was in litigation if I had, you know, a five attorney like me on the other side, I don't want to give anyone a chance to pierce that corporate veil and get here. Okay. I just, I don't like to play with the church's money. Right. So I would suggest this structure where you'll have your holding company and then you'll have your parent company own the subsidiaries. So 
this is just to me, I call a little, a little extra layer. There's no need. Like, I just don't want to have anything playing with the holding company. I don't want them to say, I think the holding company was involved. Or I, you just, you can just sleep better at night knowing they don't know nothing about this other entity. So I would have your holding company and then just have your parent company own the subsidiaries. Now, whether you want to run your individual payroll through these LLCs or you want to push all of the profits via a management fee. So if at the end of the month, Joy's Barbecue made $80,000, I, my 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 parent company, Joy's Enterprises, which is invoice Joy's Barbecue, a management fee of eighty thousand dollars. Okay, so I would basically basically you're going to be zero zeroing out all the profits of the subsidiaries if you want to push that fee up here to the S corp and only have to deal with payroll payroll taxes, um, cutting the checks from one entity. It's sometimes it can be simpler, but you got to understand if we are doing this. If you're also doing this structure, the bank, the bank accounts on these are going to all be zero at the end of the month. Okay. So if we're looking on trying to get financing on all the different entities, we may not want to zero them out because when the bank pulls those bank statements that they, they want to see that there's money left over at the end of the day. I'm just saying all that to say there are a thousand and one strategies, okay? You got to make sure that you pick the strategy that works best for you in your situation. What person A is trying to do may not be what's best for what person B is trying to do. And what person B is trying to do may not be best with what person C is trying to do. So whatever strategy, whatever thing that you're going with, is, I feel it's so important to understand what it is and why you want to do that, not just, oh, well, I heard, so I'm watching a YouTube video and they said they had the trust on the holding company and the holding company got the, it's like, baby, wait, but what, what is the outcome that, that, that you want? Okay, because I can I can drive 80 miles an hour and go to Miami and I can go to drive 80 miles an hour and go to LA. Where is the final destination? Because you can't, you one freeway can't take me to the same destination. So if you're interested in holding companies, book a holding, uh, book a business structure call with me. I can kind of hear what you have going on now, what you plan on doing and give you some couple of options on how to structure that. And like I said, if you want to trust, you need to go talk to an estate planning attorney in your state, okay? The trust is going to be state specific. Um, but you, you, you just need to understand that there are multiple ways or multiple different ways to skin a cat, but understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. But whatever cat we're skinning, we definitely need to have a holding company or at least separate LLCs for each business venture. Now, here is the biggest misconception I'm seeing all over the internet. People are always saying, well, wait till your business is making $20,000 before you form your LLC. This is why that is not correct. At the end of the day, you, you have something. You have money in your personal bank account. You may have a car, you may have a home, you may have a 401k, okay? You have some stuff, forget the business, you have some stuff, okay? So if you are doing business, I am gonna start Joy's Lashes, it's a new business and this girl on Instagram said, you know, don't form an LLC until you're making $30,000. So I was going to be doing lashes in my house. No LLC, just me. I went to the county. I paid $30, got me a DBA for Joyce Lashes. You are doing business. Your personal bank account is doing business. Your home is doing business. Your car is doing business. Your savings account is doing business. Your 401k is doing business. Your kids 504c3 plan, whatever, is doing business. That's who's doing business. Do you want to be doing business with the money in your bank account? No. Do you want to expose your home by doing business? No. Do you want to lose your kids' college savings? No. So forming an LLC when you first start a business has nothing to do with the business. 
I don't care if the business isn't hasn't brought in a dollar. You are forming the LLC to protect you. Because when you form an LLC, you take yourself out of the picture and now the LLC is doing business. When you form your LLC, you take your personal bank account out of the picture. Now we're dealing, now we're doing business and only looking at the business bank account. When you form your LLC, you take your house out of the picture. Now we're only doing business with the LLC and the only property being exposed is the LLC's property. When you form your LLC, you're taking your personal bank account out of the bit out of the picture and we're only doing business with the LLC and whatever the LLC bank account has. That is why it is so important to form the LLC. That is why I don't care if you don't have a logo, you're thinking about starting a business, form your LLC. Well, why? Well, when you're forming your business, you're going to start entering into contracts. You're going to start negotiations. You're going to start buying inventory. You may be going and signing a lease um, to get some rental property. You may be negotiating whatever is going to be um, your inventory, your marketing. You're going to be buying things from people for the startup. You don't want to be signing these contracts. I, Joy should not be signing any contract. Joy Hunt, the CEO of Joy's Lashes, should be signing the contract. Joy Hunt, on behalf of Joy's Lashes LLC, should be signing that lease agreement. You do not want to do business, okay? It is grimy out here in these business streets. Okay, don't let social media fool you. This is not all unicorns and, you know, strawberries and lollipops, okay? It's lemon juice and razor blades out here. And if you are like, oh, well, I'm going to just wait, you are exposing you. So we always want to form an LLC. If you have one LLC that's doing great and you want to do another venture, you need to be forming another LLC. What we don't want to do is if I have Joy's Barbecue and Joy's Barbecue is, is, is slanging and banging, I am booked and busy every day. Joy's Barbecue is paying my mortgage. Joy's Barbecue is paying for my luxury vehicle. Joy's Barbecue is paying for my son's private schooling. Joy's Barbecue is holding down the finances for what I'm doing. And now I'm thinking about venturing off and getting into Airbnb. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to get a DBA, Joyce Airbnb, and just put it under the LLC. There is no under an LLC. The only way to get under an LLC is to form something and put it underneath. If you go get a DBA, you're putting it in, in the LLC. So Joyce Airbnb, I'm not sure. I'm just going to try it out. I get, uh, I get maybe like a little condo or rent it out. You know, the, my, my people turn up, someone gets drunk, twerking on the kitchen counter, break their neck. They sue me. I'm on, I get a $3 million judgment. I only had a million dollar policy. That means I'm on the hook for $2 million. Well, although Joyce Aaron B hasn't made any money, but I got another DBA and just put it with Joy's Barbecue. So now my Airbnb girl who done twerked and, you know, broke her neck and is coming after me for $2 million can now touch Joy's Barbecue money. So now they're touching my mortgage money, my car money, my son's private school money, my living money. Now I'm stressed. Now I'm arguing. Now I can't sleep at night. Now I'm either losing weight or gaining weight. Now I'm having, you know, uh, gastritis. Now I'm having migraines. Now I'm irritable. Now I can't make payroll. Now I can't pay my more. Now is where the shit storm goes. Okay. Now I'm in divorce court. Now I'm at bankruptcy court. Now I'm jumping off a bridge. Okay. It can, it can go left real quick. So, for that reason is why I always holler from the rooftops, do not get a DBA. All a DBA is doing business ass backwards, okay? 
form your LLC because a little three or five hundred dollars, whatever it costs you to form it, is worth saving your sanity, is worth preventing you from migraines, is worth you know not having you be in a bankruptcy. Okay, so that's why it is so important to form your LLC. Um, now when it comes to the holding company. We don't have to have as many formalities. So we are not, once again, we are not trying to get any financing. We are not going to be getting any kind of business credit. So we don't have to have a Google page. We don't have to have a business email. We don't have to have a business phone number. Technically, you don't have to have a virtual address. I don't know if you want to have your home address on the World Wide Web, but I mean, you aren't doing anything. All you're really going to be doing for the holding company is getting your LLC, your EIN, and then getting your business bank account. But you're only going to be doing business between the holding company and your operating LLCs. We're not doing anything in the outside world. We aren't signing any contracts. We're not entering into any agreements. We're not financing anything. We are not entering, getting any loans. We're not doing anything with the outside world with our holding company. We are just going to be holding our assets. Um, if, can you form your holding company in another state? Knock yourself out because the holding company is not going to be doing any business, okay? So if you wanna have a Wyoming holding company, a Delaware, Wyoming company, whatever you wanna do, knock yourself out. The most important part though is just following the formalities of an LLC. So once you form your LLC, 95% of the states require you to file some kind of either annual report or biannual report. Most are gonna be annual. If you don't file your annual report for the LLC, then guess what? You don't have an LLC. If you don't file your holding, if you don't file all that annual report, your LLC is going to be inactive, which means you lose all of that asset protection. It's no longer an LLC. It's now you and your house and your business. I mean, your bank account and your home and your car doing business. If you are going to set up the lease agreements, let me get back to my picture. So if we're going to have our holding company own the asset and then lease it to the other LLC, we need to have a lease agreement. Every month, LLC number one should be writing a check to a holding company for blah, blah, blah for using the company asset. Those transactions need to be for real. It's not just, oh, yeah, I got this holding company and, you know, I set it up and then that's it. No, every month you need, you need to be writing a check for a lease agreement. Like how if you lease a car at Lexus every month, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna cut them a check or they're going to come pick up that car. The same thing you have to, we, we have to make everything stick. I'm giving you the structure of what needs to go on. I'm then going to tell you something is going to go wrong in your business. That's just business. Something is going to go wrong, whether it's you, a mistake, one of your employees, um, you and a partner don't see eye to eye, you and a vendor don't see eye to eye, you have a complaint ass customer, whatever the case may be, something is going to happen. And when that something happens, all what you have structured and put together, it has to stick. So the problem I see a lot of times is people are fired up to get everything set up. And then once they form the LLC, form the holding company, it's just like, well, that's it. Well, no, there's like monthly things we have to do. There's annual things we have to do to keep all this stuff together. So that when the lawsuit comes, we're good. Oh, we have a, the first thing, the first thing they're going to do is look up your entity on the Secretary of State. Is it active or is it, is it inactive? If you don't know if your, um, if your entity is active tonight, log on to your Secretary of State, type in your, do a business entity search, type in your, your business name, and it will say active, inactive, terminated, dissolved. If your LLC is not active, you have a problem because now you are doing business. The LLC is non-existent. 
So you want to make sure we have an active LLC. You want to make sure that we aren't commingling funds in our business bank account. So business funds don't hit our personal account. Personal expenses don't come out the business account because the, the next thing they're going to do is they're going to subpoena your bank statements. Are you running it like a business? Or are you getting your hair done out the business bank account? Are you getting your nails done out the business bank account? Are you shopping on the business bank account? Oh, well, if you're doing all that, you don't really have an LLC. You're just playing LLC. And that's, that's what that's what the, that's what that's what they're going to call call pierce the corporate veil saying yeah you have this llc no you don't non-existent you did not run it like an llc so i always tell people think of yourself as walmart what would the ceo of walmart do if the ceo of walmart was at a football game with his son and his son won a popsicle is he gonna pull out the walmart credit card or is he going to pull out the uh, his personal credit card? What is he going to do? You have to run your business like it's Walmart because you are in business. Business is business. You're black, you're white, you're Asian, you're Latin, you're a man, you're a woman. You make a million dollars a month. You make a million dollars a day. You make $10. It's all the same. It's business. It's the same rule. So we got to have an active LLC. We need to have an operating agreement for our LLC. If you are an S Corp, that is not a business entity. Okay. That's a tax election. So if LLC is at the end of your name, then you are an LLC. If INC Inc. is at the end of your name, then you're a corporation. If you're a corporation, you need to have bylaws. You need to have a board of directors and you have, you need to have issued out shares of stock. If you have a corporation, you don't have all that, you don't have a corporation. The first thing they're going to do, <laughs> they're going to subpoena your minutes. Let me see your, your, your corporate minutes for the last three years. If you're a corporation, you are supposed to be having annual meetings that are recorded. They're going to ask you for those meetings. If you don't have them, you're going to be up shit's creek. They're going to ask you for how many shares of stock have been issued. If you haven't issued shares of stock, you're going to be up Shit's Creek. You're not a real corporation. Okay? So when you form these things, when you get all these things, understand what it is and why you're getting this. That's why I always say get an LLC. Because there are no annual minutes that you have. It's just less stuff for y'all to mess up. Less. So LLC is operating agreement, okay? If you are a PLLC, same thing. If LLC is at the end of your name, uh, operating agreement. If Inc. is at the end of your name or PC for professional corporation, you need to have um, bylaws and annual meetings that are recorded. Even if you're the only owner in the corporate, you're the only shareholder in the corporation, you have to have a meeting with yourself and you have to jot it down and you have to have a, a corporate notebook that holds all your meetings, meetings, and you have to keep them on file. They will be subpoenaed. You have to issue out shares of stock if you're a corporation. Business bank account applies the same with your LLC or a corporation. Do not swipe that card for personal expenses. Do not have business money going into your personal account. Point blank period. Then you need to know if your industry requires any kind of insurance. If you are underinsured, that is another way of um, being of what they call piercing the corporate veil. You are not following whatever are the corporate guidelines. Underinsured means that you are not running your business properly. If your business is carrying a negative balance all the time, you're going to have an issue. That's called you. You can't be undercapitalized. Now, if, you're just, if you just aren't making money, that's understandable. But if you're making money and you're pulling it all out of the, out, out of the bank and it's just zero, negative, and it's not going to bills, you're just taking all the cash out, that's called being undercapitalized. That's another way of piercing the corporate veil. Okay, so you want to make sure, like, put your business hats on. Like, whatever you, you know, learn from uncle and them, you know, business to, to, to keep all the protections of business we have to run it like a business, okay? So, let me see if I had any questions. 
<sighs> what is the definition and purpose of a butterfly kiss? Baby, where you been? So a holding company is going to hold your assets. It's going to be an entity that is just used to hold the assets. So if you were to get sued, you don't lose your assets. If you want to have one company be like the parent company that owns your other entities, your other business ventures, then you want something called a parent company. A parent company is going to be like the, the parent and then the babies will be what they call the subsidiaries. And the parent company would then own the baby company if you want to put them in this format. You don't have to have that format. If you just have multiple businesses... You can also have the bubbles where you just have LLCs, number one, two, three in your holding company. They're not connected, but it's kind of like it's the same. It's it's the same thing, just structured differently. So, let's see. Should we have a separate bank account? Yes. Yes. So every LLC needs to have an LLC. It needs to be active. It needs to have an operating agreement. It needs to have a bank account. Yes. That's what makes it an LLC. And following the corporate formality. If you don't have a bank account, we're going to have an issue or we're doing business. Okay. Let me see. If you are part owner of the LLC, can you also file for write-offs on your taxes? So, if you are... If you are the owner... If there are... Okay. If you are the sole owner of an LLC, that your LLC is going to be filed on your personal tax return via a Schedule C unless you are taxed as an S-Corp. If there are two or more owners of an LLC that is not being taxed as an S-Corp, you are going to be filing what's called a partnership tax return. It's going to be a 1065. The partnership tax return will be filed a month before the personal is due. You will get something called a K-1. So for whatever are the business expenses. So if I have Joy's Barbecue, if me and Beyonce, hey, babe, if we own Joy's Barbecue and Joy's Barbecue made $100,000 gross, that means before expenses, and then <clears throat> inventory uh, payroll, like all that, all those expenses were um, $50,000, then the business made $50,000 net. I would get a K-1 for twenty five, dollars and Beyonce would get a K-1 for $25,000. I would then take that K-1 of $25,000 and file that on my personal tax return. So whatever were the business expenses, that's already been deducted. And then whatever is the profit for the business, the owners have to file on their personal tax return. So that's how you would do that. You can find these slides in my holding company masterclass that is online. Okay, right away insurance is assets have to be paid off, correct? Okay, let me see. Let me see what else I got for questions. I'm going the wrong way. Sorry. Can you open or start a business for someone? Glamour, uh, glamour it creations. I don't, what do you mean open it for someone? You mean like put your name on the business? What do you mean? Can a, parent, can a holding company, can you have a holding company and a parent? Yes, you can. You can have a holding company and a parent company. <laughs> you would have the holding company and then you have the parent company on the subsidiary. So you can have, you know, you can have any kind of structure that you would like. If you want to know what, what your structure options are, you know, you can always book a business structure call with me. Do you analyze business structure in your appointments? Yes, I do. I have a business structure call where I will go over what you have to see. Like, are you, are you set up the correct way? And then whatever you are doing or planning on doing, I will give you a game plan and a structure as to what is best or your different options as to how you can structure what you are doing to best fit your needs. Because everyone's needs are different. Okay, how do you get an operating agreement? I have an operating agreement on my website, a template. 
you can purchase and then you all you have to do is you know plug in your your um your business information can you change holding companies or make one other and place the llc in it when it becomes more successful so once again i don't advise that we have holding companies own the business i'm i i say have a parent company own the business if you already pay for an llc and now want to change it to an s corp when can i make this change and will it call okay so an s corp is not a business entity okay so you cannot form an s corp it doesn't exist the only entities you have will be an llc or a c corp an S Corp is only a tax election. An S Corp is going to be a form that you fill out with the IRS saying, hey, IRS, hey, I'm an LLC, but for your department, I want you to treat me like an S Corp. Or you could be a corporation. Hey, IRS, hey, girl. Okay, I know I'm a corporation, but for you, I want you to treat me and tax me like an S Corp. So an, an S-Corp is just a tax election. If you are choosing to be taxed as an S-Corp, you should be making this election when you are making about sixty dollars or $80,000 in profit a year. If you are an S-Corp, you're going to have to file your own, a separate business tax return, which can run you anywhere between five fifty dollars and $2,000, depending on, on how what you got going on. If you are an S Corp and you are the owner, you are supposed to be on a payroll with payroll taxes being taken out every two weeks, being sent to the IRS. If you don't follow those formalities, the IRS is going to say, boom, you are not an S Corp and they're going to revoke your S Corp election. If you want, if you are at that $68,000 profit, you need to contact your CPA or your accountant and they can make the S Corp election for you. It's going to be a form 2252, 2352, something like that. But the deadline is March 15th. So no one can make an S Corp election right now. So for, as far as for 2023, if you didn't make it by March, by, by, by March 15th, you have missed it for 2023 so you can make your election for the following tax year so no you can't pay a fee to change it you would just be taxed as an s corp okay i missed something up here oh my my uh my my business structure calls for 30 minutes and it's 99 dollars can I create my own? Yes, Corey Wilkins, you can create your own holding company. I have a holding company masterclass that's going to teach you how to form the holding company. It's also going to teach you how to do that parent subsidiary um, uh, um, <clears throat> structure. And it's going to give you the lease agreements if you're going to be leasing vehicles or property in between um, entities. And that is um, on my website for 149 I have one through Taylor Brand. How do I make sure it's legit? You can book a business structure call and I can make sure that it was set up correct. Okay, if I file an LLC in my sister's name, if I want to gift her a business. Okay, um, yes, you could do that. Yes, you could do that. But to get the EIN, the EIN is gonna require someone's name and social. To be the responsible party can my holding company and parent company hold unrelated business businesses like my insurance agency and real estate brokerage okay right away insurance i'm, I'm lost so the parent company will own whatever are what whatever are the businesses you own that's what they don't the businesses don't have to be related to be a subsidiary. You can have whatever business you want owned by the parent company. I don't know if I answer your question. I don't know if I understood your question. Right away insurance. Um Green love my hair. Thank you, girl. You know, got me a little new haircut, you know. I'm trying to change up my look, do a little something different. Okay, um, I am going to save this video and put it on my page. So if you, if you are just chiming in, you can watch it on my page later on tonight. Can I change the address for my company? Um, yes, you can. You have to file an amendment 
with your Secretary of State. The difference between a parent company, a holding company, is one an umbrella and the other an owner. Okay, so a holding company is used to hold assets. Let me get my other, my other picture. So, look at Satan. Look at Satan. So the holding company... A holding, okay, a holding company is, is an LLC, okay? It's an LLC. What makes it a holding company is how we're using the LLC. So, like, if I had a work truck, or if I had, like, a, like, a old, I don't know if you, oh, if I just had, like, a, a truck, and that was my, my work truck. Like, I had a Toyota, what's Toyota? A Toyota Tundra. I had a Toyota Tundra, and that's my work truck. When I go to Toyota, I don't, I don't ask for a work truck. I ask for a Toyota Tundra. Now, I may use the Toyota Tundra as a work truck, but somebody else may use the Toyota Tundra as like their everyday car. What makes it a holding company is how you use the LLC. So a holding company is going to hold your assets. Meaning you're going to put the assets in this company. They are not going to be in any of these, any of your operating LLCs. We're going to then lease the assets to the other LLCs to be able to use. We're going to have a lease agreement and we're going to pay a fee every month to be able to use this company's assets. That way, if one of these companies were to get sued, they will not lose the asset. A parent company will also be called or referred to as an umbrella company. A parent company owns other businesses called subsidiaries. So the parent company owns the baby company. So that's a parent company or an umbrella company. A holding company holds assets. So a parent company owns businesses or entities. A holding company owns assets. That is the difference. Okay. Does grant monies deposited into your business account, will it be taxed? Okay, if you receive a grant that will be classified as income, you're going to use the grant money, I'm assuming, for, for things for your business. So it will be expensed out. So normally, you'll, normally you're going to use all of the money you get for the grant for your business. So it kind of zeroes out so you're not paying a tax on it. <clears throat> Can you change your business name? You can change anything on your business. Your your name, your address, the registered agent, um, what the purpose is. You do all that by filing an amendment, an amendment with your Secretary of State. What is the best way to build business credit? First, start with the LLC, EIN, and DUNS. That's going to be... Business credit is going to be a system. So you got to go through elementary school, then junior high, then high school. Elementary school is going to be, be becoming credible, verifiable, and digital footprints. So no home address, no P.O. box, no cell phone number, no personal Instagram. You got to have a website, Google my business page, Yelp page, um, business phone number, business address. That's elementary school. Junior high is now we got to go get our Denim Bradstreet number to get our Net30 accounts. Vendors that will let us buy something and pay it in 30 days. Now, we're, that was middle school. Now, we're going to go to junior high. So, junior high is going to be what we call tier two. Now, we're going to, once you have enough of enough vendor accounts and you get a paydex score of 80, a paydex score is like your business credit score. Okay. <clears throat> once you have enough net 30s or vendor accounts reporting to your business credit report, then you can now apply for store credit cards. So Office Depot, Home Depot, Lowe's, Staples, um, gas cards, Shell, BP. Once you have a certain amount of those accounts reporting to your business credit report, then we can go to high school. High school is going to be your cash credit cards. Okay, so American Express, Capital One, Chase. Once you get enough of those accounts reporting to your business, uh, your business credit report, your business yeah, credit report, 
you can then go to college. College will be either getting financing uh, for a vehicle or walking into the bank to get a line of credit or a loan. Now, if you are going to stand on the business alone and you're not going to put yourself up as a PG, you will not get any money from the bank without having revenue in your business bank account. How, how much you get financed for is solely dependent on how much you have in that business bank account. They're going to pull your bank savings for the last 90 days. You got to have at least $10,000 or more a month being deposited with no negative ending daily balance in the last four months. That's business credit. I have a one-on-one -on -one business credit program in my, on my website. Okay, let me see if I missed anything else. Does the IRS require a physical? The IRS will not give you EIN with the PO box you or a virtual address. You, you, you have to have a physical address for the IRS. How I get that text on your phone? Hmm. One new year, I don't understand what you're saying. What owns the parent company? What owns the holding company? Um, either you will own the parent company or another entity can own the parent company. And either you can own the holding company or another entity can own the uh, holding company. Can I explain the registered agent? <clears throat> so the registered agent is going to be a person responsible for receiving mail on behalf of the business. So it can be you. It can be your mama and them. Or you can hire a company to be your registered agent. The registered agent address is the most important person and address on your LLC for this reason. When a lawsuit's coming, this is the address that they have to serve you with the lawsuit. Now, if you have moved from whatever address you put for your registered address, if you hired a company to be your registered agent and you didn't pay them the next year, so they're not your agent, you are going to have to have, you're going to have an issue because when someone's suing you, they have to leave the lawsuit with the person or at that address. So they're going to come, depending on your state, it depends on how many attempts that a service processor has to give, but normally it's going to be about three. So if I say my mama is my registered agent, so Joyce Hunt at address 123, they're going to go to address 123 three times and ask, hey, is Joyce Hunt here? Is Joyce Hunt here? Is Joyce Hunt here? So if my mama has moved and I never changed my registered agent on that third time of them coming and Joyce Hunt isn't here, they're going to leave that lawsuit at that, at that address. If you are not at that address, you are not going to know that someone is trying to sue you and you just got served. Most states, the, the time limit to respond to a lawsuit is going to be 30 days. You have 30 days to file what's called an answer. If you don't file your answer, then the other party can win by default, meaning you didn't say nothing, so then I win. So anyone can be your registered agent, but you need to make sure that whoever is your registered agent and that address you put on there is a good person and a good address. That's why I always say every year, just log on or put your articles. Make sure that you look at that registered agent's name and address. Me personally, I want to be my own agent because maybe if someone's coming for me, I need to know who's coming for me. So I can go ahead and grab that. Bam. Oh, this is what this is what's coming. Perfect. Now I know what's coming. And I can go, you know, hey, attorney, whatever's going on and be able to, you know, go ahead and mitigate my damages. So I'm always putting myself on as a as the registered agent. If you're like, oh, that's just too stressful. If I got a lawsuit, I may pass out. OK, I understand that you can go ahead and hire someone, but just make sure that every year, because all these registered agent companies, a lot of times if you use a company to form your LLC, they may like, you may have a package that, that, that will include them being your agent for the first year. But come year two, come year three at that credit card they had on file, you know, is no longer working. 
and and you know and they don't get paid they're not going to be their agent so when they when, when the lawsuit comes and they leave it there they're not going to let you know that this is here because baby you haven't paid me to call you regarding this mail so now you may be getting a judgment have no idea that you even have a lawsuit and now someone basically wins and now they can come